This painting was done in two live streams. You can see the building block phase here, and the detailed part was a session for the channel members. I'll focus on the latter part in this video, but if you want to see the real-time version of this first part, you can always check that out right here for free. For both of the live streams, I was using heavy paper brush. When I'm using a brush for painting, I almost always set the same brush for all three tools, for the brush, the eraser and the smudge tool. That cuts out a lot of the unnecessary UI trash from the whole process. That enables me to just focus on the design aspects of the painting, because really that's what I care about when I'm doing an illustration. In this painting, there was one more element that helped me a whole lot. To achieve this painterly look, I painted all the elements, including the sky, all on the same layer. Now, while this is super important part of getting this look in Procreate or any other digital painting application, I have to point out a few key elements here, in case this is something that you want to do on your own. I did not use only one layer for this painting. In fact, by the time I got to the end of the second livestream, there were a ton of layers that needed to be flattened so that I would have room for more. While all the main elements, the castle, the foreground, all of those elements are painted on the same layer, gradients, fog clusters and lighting effects, they get stacked on their own layers. That gives me the greatest flexibility in finding the right hues for them. Often that means that I will just open the hue and saturation sliders and scroll through all the options that might work. And when I find something that works, I will just leave it there. As soon as I find the right colors, they don't need to be editable anymore. You really shouldn't hang on to the layers that you don't need anymore. Especially when painting something in this style. Each layer is like a door that is left open for different directions for the painting to go towards. I'm speaking from my own mistakes here when I say that it can be addictive to keep those options open. But these different routes that your painting can go towards, they actually keep you from progressing into any direction at all. This is something that I personally found out the hard way. When I started my own career as a full-time artist, I used to have massive, massive Photoshop files with almost a hundred layers in them. Sidebar. This used to be a lot, by the way. I understand that technology has advanced, but back then my Photoshop files were notorious for crashing computers. I kept the options open because I wanted to be able to react to possible changes the project was going through, and I wanted to be able to make those changes quickly. So that was my reasoning for it. But eventually, I learned to let go of that way of working, because it was seriously affecting the quality of my work. Also, I noticed that I was avoiding the responsibility of my role as a concept artist. Being a concept artist is not the same as being a sandwich artist or working at Subway. And no offense to sandwich artists anywhere, I think that is a fancy job title. The whole value of a concept piece comes from giving ideas that fit the needs of the project. It's not about tailoring it to the needs of one customer, or somebody who is working on the project. The customer is the player and you're supposed to already know if the piece you're working on needs letters or not. Okay, I don't know where I'm going with this metaphor anymore. The point is that concept art is design and you have to make decisions to do any design. You can't leave those options open. So therefore, letting go of excess fat layers is a way to progress the painting. To complete a painting like this, you have to keep making constant decisions all the time on what's important to you, because you're the artist. What do you want people to see? And more importantly, what do you want them to feel when they look at your piece? Now, I understand that this might be heading towards my own personal tastes, but for me, a painting needs to have a mood. Without a mood, it's just not done yet for me. If I'm working on a painting that isn't quite feeling right yet, it's usually always because I haven't decided on the mood I'm going for, or that I have decided on a mood, but I haven't managed to achieve that in painting yet. And it might be because of technical reasons or storytelling reasons. If you're an artist that is suffering from perfectionism, 
remember that perfectionism is a flaw, not a virtue, then I recommend paying extra attention to the mood in your paintings. Perfectionism often manifests in spending way too much time on details or overworking areas that in no way contribute to the main visual impact of your piece. There can be several reasons why an illustration isn't conveying the intended mood. But to give you a practical, actionable steps on how to solve these issues, I can go over some of my own checklist items to make sure the mood is coming across in my own paintings. The most difficult problem to solve is usually having too many colors in the same painting. If you look at the process video of the bear piece in the second half of this video, for example, you'll notice that I seriously edited down all of the hue variety in that piece to get to the end result. Editing colors can be really fun. It's something that I really enjoy. I usually edit my paintings for almost an hour after they are done in the painting phase. But the editing process is only fun if the painting has been painted the right way, meaning that there is editing room in the colors. So for example, when a hue variety in a painting is completely out of hand, especially when it's not good for the visual impact of that piece, then editing the colors can be a real uphill battle. To save myself from that kind of reverse engineering of color design, I try to keep the colors as easy to edit as possible when I'm painting the image. That means that I don't hit value or saturation extremes, and I leave hue variety accents to the very last steps in my painting process. The second element that can easily derail the mood of a painting is not deciding on the hue of the light source. Whenever painting lights or shadows on any surface, those color choices ideally should always, without exception, communicate what color is that light in that scene. Anyone who has been in my concept art classes knows that I will keep hammering this one idea until it becomes second nature. Because in my mind, there's really no point in going into any other image construction techniques, not before this core concept is visible in paintings. And I do this mistake all the time as well. That's why I have it as part of my checklist, so that I can notice it as often as possible. So if I see areas in my painting where I'm accidentally shading something by just adding white or black, that is a mistake. That area needs repainting so that it can communicate what kind of light is present in that scene. Because it is something that will make that mood apparent in a painting more often than not. If I don't make a lot of those mistakes, then usually I won't have to troubleshoot a lack of mood in a painting at all. It's that important. The third way to check if the atmosphere is there in the painting, it has nothing to do with technical aspects of illustration at all. Basically, if you hide your UI, you can do this in Procreate by just tapping the screen with four fingers at once, and you can bring the UI back the same way. Just stare at the piece for a while. If the painting is working, your eye will stop hunting for composition mistakes or saturation errors. When a painting works, you have to give it a few seconds to let it affect you. This can be hard to notice when you're working on it or are too zoomed in to notice where the painting is at that current moment. Especially if you're a perfectionist or if you're just doing tons of details and you're super zoomed in, then it's impossible to notice where the painting is at that moment. You don't have to guess if the painting is, quote, there yet. If you give it a moment to let it tell you if it's there yet, trust me, the painting will tell you when it's done. For me, in the case of this painting, it happened around the time when I added those dead pale trees to the lower corners of this piece. They just softened the impression this piece gave me. I think it's a contrast between the horses and the castle. Like There's something about the freedom and built walls that kind of made me look at the piece and just like wonder what it is about and be absorbed in that world. Like when that happened, I wasn't looking at the technical aspects or thinking if my perspective lines are correct or not. I'm sure that there are tons of these mistakes, but for me, the things that matter are if the painting has a mood or not. And 
I reached that threshold when it stopped being a physical thing anymore and it suddenly became this window to another world. When an illustration goes from a mere object into a whole experience, for me it's very clear in that moment that it is done, at least in all the ways that matter to me. When a painting is finished, you don't see it, you feel it. And that's different, and that is more important than what is there on the canvas. If it's an experience, then it will last with you, even when you close the screen or look the other way. This is pretty much one of the most magical moments there is when it comes to art. I mean, with enough patience and work, you can create a window to a whole other world. I don't know when that could ever be boring for me, because it has been the reason why I still create art and why it's still so addictive to me, because it is literally the best thing ever. And that's why I recommend that you don't abandon your paintings when you don't feel like they're working. All images work or don't work for a reason. When you approach your painting in these sort of situations, like any other task to be finished, you'll be able to find the elements that need to be fixed, just through a simple checklist. And I recommend that you do so, because I want you to experience this for yourself as well. And we all need you to make that art as well, because we all get to experience and feel what kind of paintings you do. Thank you for watching, I'm Mikko and I'll see you in my next video.